Hello, my name is Keith Griffin. I'm managing editor of American Business Media, producers of Banking New England and Bank World, which is where we are today. And one of our presenters today is Anthony Cole, probably better known as Tony Cole. He is the founder and CLO for Anthony Cole Training Group and Hire Better Salespeople. Tony, thank you for taking time to join us. Thank you, I appreciate it. Tell me a little bit about the Anthony Cole Training Group. Well, uh, as you and I were talking before we got on, I mean, that could take up hours and hours of yeah. conversation, so we'll try and minimize it. Uh, in a nutshell, you know, we started out as a company that was designed to help companies with sales and sales training, okay, sure. and then developed into a more of a consulting practice to help uh, companies close what we call as the opportunity gap. And okay, that sure. involves lots of things relative to sales management, leadership development, recruiting, and so on and so forth. And uh, we happen to have a specialty in, uh, in community banks. Oh, neat. And one of the things, well, actually, what you're going to be talking about today is the topic of this book, which is how to hire bankers who will sell. Why is it so difficult to find bankers who can sell? Uh, I tell you, it's, e it's difficult to find uh, salespeople who will sell in almost any oh, industry. Okay, sure. It, it's really, it's really a challenge. Uh, we work in three very specific uh, verticals. One happens to be banking, the other is insurance, and the other is uh, financial services. Okay. And as I was talking to some of the participants here, that when we go across the country doing the work that we do and talking to people like you or talking to presidents and CEOs, I ask them, top three things you need help with, always across the board, is talent acquisition. Sure. And, um, and so it's a challenge for everybody. And, and um, there's two components to it. One is the pool behind the, the, um, our generation, the, uh, the, uh, the boomers, sure. is about half the size. Okay. And so the pool has shrunken. And then the other thing, specifically in those industries, is that there was a time when you and I got into the business where there were programs to develop that talent. Okay. It doesn't exist anymore. Huh. Interesting. And without giving away too much about your talk, how do you spot a sales rainmaker in the first 10 minutes of an interview? Like, What, are, what makes a rainmaker stand out? Well, uh, I'm, I'm currently reading a book talk, called uh, Talking to Stranger by Malcolm Gladwell. Sure. And if you had asked me that question three days ago, I would have <laughs> a different answer. Yeah. What I'm learning from the book is, is you can't tell in the first 10 minutes. Okay. There are too many things going on where their body language, how they look, and the things they say probably don't match. Okay. And the idea is is that we have a, a default to truth mechanism in our head. And so um, to answer your question, it's quite difficult. Okay. And so one of the things we'll be talking about in our session today is how to use an objective approach, how to use data, and how to use research to identify is this a rainmaker versus not a rainmaker versus just using gut instinct like we have for years and years and years. Sure, so it's become more objective than subjective. Uh, it can be. Yep. You know, unfortunately, it's it's very similar to, I don't know if you have any uh, movie viewers uh, that will be watching this, but one of my favorite movies is uh, uh, the game with the Oakland uh, A's. Um, oh, Billy Money Bean. Ball. Money Ball, yeah. Yep. yep. And uh, there's a scene in there where he gets into a fight and a discussion with his chief scout. And, uh, and the scout says, you know, your computer doesn't know the things that we know and he ends up firing a guy because the computer knows more than he knows, <laughs> right? And, and so, so that's where um, a lot of industries have migrated to is uh, there's so much talk here at this conference about data and using data sure. to uncover revenue opportunities. Yep. Well, what we're suggesting is use some additional data and research to make sure that you have the people that can go execute the strategy you're putting in place. That kind of makes sense? Sure, no, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I imagine Banking must present a little bit of a challenge too when it comes to sales because you're doing business to consumer and also business to business. Is sales just sales or do you need specific s skill sets depending if you're selling B2B or, or business to consumer? Uh, uh, to, to not give too much away, not, I really don't care about giving away, so I'll tell sure. your audience. Okay. There's really three things that we look at when we start to do diagnostics and use science and research to identify um, what's a good hire for sales or not. And it, generally speaking, it breaks into down to three categories. One is, do they have the will to sell? Okay. That's desire, commitment, responsibility, uh, and, and not making excuses, okay, and motivation. Sure. The second area is sales DNA. 
uh, to use an athletic analogy, how high can they jump, how fast can they run, how strong are they? <laughs> sure. And then the third thing are the sales competencies. So okay. to circle back to your question, how do you tell? The only way to effectively tell is to use some sort of assessment. And the reason being is during the interview process, mm -hmm. the, um, the candidate can mask the other two with their sales competencies. Oh, sure. All right? Yep. And so, so when you talk about is it a challenge because there's two different roles, it's a challenge relative to that third piece. Okay. Regardless of what the role is within the bank, I was talking to some people that were branch managers at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. uh, those people still have to have will to succeed in that role. Okay. They still need a set of sales DNA competencies to be successful. Where the variance comes in is um, what sales competencies do they need that might be different than wealth, treasury management, uh, um, uh, commercial lending, mm -hmm. or, or, or cash management. So, sure. so that's where you would start to differentiate. And what we do is we create a profile for each one of those roles in the organization and assess people based on what that role looks like. Okay. There's also a movement afoot to get away from the traditional teller model, where you get customer service people who can do everything within a branch. Is that more of a challenge when it comes to hiring? Are branch consumers going to feel like they're being sold to instead of being given customer service? Are you going to have to hire new tellers who can sell? You need to hire people that can and will engage in a conversation. Okay. You know, uh, uh, again, we were talking at lunch, there's a uh, preconceived notion of the person inside the branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really don't care if it's the branch manager, the relationship manager within the branch or the teller, but there's a perception that if I walk into the bank, I'm in a hurry. Sure. The thinking, our thinking is, well, if I was in a hurry, then I would have done drive-through yep. or use technology to conduct my business. Yeah. Um, now, it doesn't mean I, I won't be in a hurry, but let's not jump to the conclusion that I'm in a hurry. Exactly. And so really what banks need to be thinking about today in their hiring process is looking for people who are comfortable engaging in a conversation, not necessarily a sales conversation, sure. but just a conversation about, hey, it's great to see you come back in your branch today. Hope things are going well. Last time we talked, Jimmy was getting ready to go off to college. How's that going? Yep. As you're conducting the business that I came in for, what people have to get comfortable with is, you know, I've never taken the time to ask you the question, how does this particular asset of yours fit into your overall portfolio for financial yep. freedom? I mean, that's what we need to teach. So I'm not going to get hung up on, is that the teller, is that the branch manager, is that the, is that the universal banker? It really comes down to, you know, when, when someone walks in, they're going to see the face of the bank. Yep. What does that person need to be able to do? Let's forget about the title. What do they need to be able to do? Sure. It's a challenge. Oh, it is? American. Big challenge. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the challenges is, like we said before, is the pool has shrunk. Yeah. And, and the pool that is available today uh, doesn't have quite the patience as our generation, not to give that away. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's an immediate gratification they're searching for. And the, one of the challenges is that at that entry point, there's a tendency for those uh, younger folks, first career people, to chase the next quarter. Sure. That's just, honestly, the way they've been raised somewhat yeah. in business. Yeah. 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 So we have to do a better job up front, sifting through that and trying to find those people who are looking for something that's career building or career transformational. Good. Well, Tony, it's been a great conversation. I've been with Tony Cole from Anthony Cole Training Group. Group. And who has a book called How to Hire Bankers Who Will Sell. It's available for download at your website. And what's the website real quick? Uh, AnthonyColtraining.com. That's easy. And thank you for your time. My name is Keith Griffin, Managing Editor of American Business Media. And I'm going to steal Tony's signature line, Vaya con Dios. <laughs> thank you, Keith. Very much. <laughs> thank I you. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you.